the desire results. Right? I mean, most of us know that Scripture says that he watch over his word to perform. Right? Mm -hmm. Am I the right doing? Yes. Mm -hmm. You need me to go take you there? That's what it says in there? Yeah. You watch over his word. And that word watch means it's a word, it's a feminine watch. It means he incubates his word. He, in one translation, he hastens his word. So whatever object that God has, he wants to hasten it. And most of us think that the pressure coming from me. The pressure ain't coming from me. It's coming from God hastening the word. Because one of the words for one of the definitions for word is the bar. And that word, when it says the bar, but join it the word of the Old Testament, it means to get behind you and push you. The word should push you to a result. It should push you to metamorphosis. It should push you to change. We need to be able to do what 2 Corinthians 13 and 5 says. Examine yourself and see if you be in the faith. See if you got the necessary policies or procedures. See if your comprehension is correct. Lest you be disqualified. That's what rubber means. Be disqualified. So you can be disqualified. Let me tell you something. You can be disqualified and never know it. I know it sounds rude, but it's the truth. Saul was disqualified and didn't even know it. The tabernacle of Moses was disqualified. They, in Gibeon, God was over at, at Zion, and they still had service in Gibeon. He disqualified because there wasn't no presence. The ark was in Zion. But they helped. They had church over there. They still had sacrifices over in Gibeon. But God was over in Zion. God don't tell you it's over. You can tell by yourself because it's like, you, oh, something's wrong. I, I don't have the joy of the Lord. I don't have passion. I'm not hearing. And this is goodness that leads us to repentance. But we need to make up our minds and say, okay, God, when you reveal a principle to me, I'm going to take you at face value. I'm going to look at this thing and I'm going to internalize it. I'm going to go look at it. You know, don't just take it for what I say, but all through the teachings I ever taught, you should be able to say, man, I'm going to go back over videos. I'm going to go back over teaching. I'm going to go back over my notes. And I'm going to hold me accountable to what I've heard. Yeah. 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 That's right. Because that's how you're going to get into metamorphosis. You're not going to get through exposure. You're not going to get through because somebody said something. Right. It was something you said. I wish I, I, you probably, we, we was talking, but it was something you said. You mentioned something about how most of us think by being exposed to. Remember that conversation? Yeah. What was that? How did you say it? I, I said just because you're in the building don't mean that you have, you receive what what uh, what was given. Right. You see, we don't, and that sounds so small, but it's the truth. Because right. we think if we can put it in our pocket, put it in our purse, put it, put it in our, that's, but you, that's not, just to be able to replay it doesn't mean you have it. Right. I still, to this very day, go back over people teachings and stuff, Tim Early's and, and Apostle Peter, I still go back because I have to revisit it because I understand I can't conceptualize everything. Yeah. And God speaks to you or give you a word in season. So it meant that even though a word was spoken on a subject matter, within that word is a fresh season. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand how, how is it that we're going to get metamorphosis? How is it that we're going to go from, from uh, one state to the next? Sounds like transition. How are we going to go and set up in our life a routine set of principles or procedures that's going to order our steps to God's expected end? Because that's what it's all about, y'all. God has an end for each and every one of us. I know I'm boring, but there's an end. Heaven ain't your end. It's a binary place. It's between what God wants to do here. Heaven comes here. 
Get to the last book. Uh, Y'all know you haven't come here? Y'all gonna do that? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. he comes here. John looked up and he saw. He saw that New Jerusalem, mm -hmm. that holy city, yes, come in here. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It ain't just one time. We can preach that. But whatever God wants to do, whatever God has done there, that settled there has to somehow be settled here. He wants to do it here. Jesus gave us the prayer. Our Father who, hallowed be thee. Thy will be done. As it is in So whatever heaven has, or whatever happens in heaven, he wanted to happen here. But we got to get our minds changed. Go to Romans 12. We got to. Did I tell y'all Genesis? Let's go Genesis. Let me show you. Then we'll go to Romans. Genesis 1. If we're going to be metamorphosis here, we're going to pattern. Genesis 1 and 1. We need to be metamorphosis. We got to come out of that old, 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 old man. <laughs> Look. It, natural man is our whole problem. Mm -hmm. We still believe the lie that he's alive. The old man is not the problem. It's the unrenewed mind. That's the problem. I told this out a long time ago. That's the, it's the mind. It's okay. Mm -hmm. She has to learn how to submit to her husband. When she learns that the other husband is dead, Romans 7, it's not about the law. Romans 7, verse 1 through 7, she understands. She has a new husband. When you understand... You have a new loyalty and allegiance. You have a new covenant with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Your life's going to be a whole lot better. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the what? face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Those first three verses is your metamorphosis. All of us. How does that work? How does that work? Apostle, go back to one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Right? In the beginning. But then verse 2, and the earth was without form and void. Not heaven. Most theologians say heaven had a fight. But according to the scriptures, the fight wasn't in the heavens. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Right? And the earth was without form. So the earth was without form. It was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Right there, we got two faces. <laughs> no, no, I ain't calling you two faces. But if you look at that, the face of the deep, that's what the Holy Spirit came to do with us. We were without form, and we were void. Then the Holy Spirit moved upon us. A preacher spoke a word, said, let there be light. From that, morning, that, from that point, you begin to cross the threshold into metamorphosis. That's what, that's what it's all about, y'all. So we have a, a, a dichotomy there. A face of the water or a face of the deep. Which one are you going to live from? I'm going to live from the face of the water. Face of the deep has a whole other message I did some time ago. That's, that's your potential. That's some things that still need to be brought to fruition. But the face of the water is where you can look into the, the word, the waters, and you can see your image. You can look into the, the, to the, to the glass and the mirror. And you can see your image. That's what we want. But we can't get there because we have an incorrect understanding of what, we're look, what to look for. Right? Now Romans 12 and 1 says this. Romans 12 and 1. So we got to be metamorphosed. You can't substitute... None of the two I just gave you. He said, let, he said, let there be light, and there was light. So you had the Word of God, and you had the Spirit of God mm -hmm. in conjunction. If you're going to enter into metamorphosis, you need the Word of God and the Spirit of God. So we have to redefine the activity of the Spirit and the Word. Yes, sir. Tell you that we got to redefine it. We got to redefine it. 
We got to redefine it. And we got to be metamorphosed in our mind. We, because there's a sanctification that has to transpire on the inside of us. We, and part of the metamorphosis is the sanctification. You know, to being sanctified. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you be present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. service. Says what? He says, I beseech you, brethren, to, by the mercies of God. It takes God mercy for us to bring our body under subjection, huh? I mean, though, sometimes we miss it trying to bring it under. Okay, I do. Uh, but he wants it to be a living sacrifice. He don't want it to be dead. I'm not trying to kill it. He wants us to be able to engage him in the whole process. He wants us to be aware. That's what it means to be a living sacrifice. He wants us to participate in transformation, in, in metamorphosis. Right? He don't want you to zone out. He wants you to be able to say, I'm going to acknowledge you as king of my life, the Lord of my life. So I'm going to present it to the Lord because that is my reasonable service. Of one translation, my primary service is to offer my life to the Lord. So folks, this is, I'm telling you, most folks don't get this far. We can't even go to verse 2. Because most folks haven't figured out that their body is, belongs to God. Yeah, yeah let, me move, let me go to verse 2. <laughs> you can tell. Yeah. It seems like I just, you know, like I bungee jumped. It said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. Your mind. I know apostles like Apostle Glass, I know other apostles, they just, this is they bread and butter. It should be ours too. Because the whole problem we got is in the mind. 